All right. Turn to somebody and say, glad you're here. Glad you came. Now turn back to that same person and say, however, this message is for me. <laughs> this message this morning is for me, so I'm going to pay some attention to this. It sounds like Adam already read these chapters because he led us into that. I'm so inspired to be here with what you're doing and what a privilege to be here at the same time and to serve with these licensed Unity teachers. So thank you all again. Also, I'm hearing from you that the book has made a difference in your way of being. So that is bravo to that. And it's exactly what it's intended for. Like my mission is to serve those who serve, which is why I'm here, and to get empowered teachings to the whole of the world. So I donated a, these books to your ministry. And then you said yes to it. And now we need some more. So I'll send you another box of them. And then I'm going to invite you to buy some extras or offering or ever how you're handling it here to get to get more of this out in the world because then that money will go to buy another box of books to take to the another ministry which will then take it on out into the world so Martha Creek can reach this many but we can reach this many and then together we can do what I cannot do alone we can do together in unity what cannot be done alone by any person and you can give them as gifts Give them to people you don't like. I mean, <laughs> get even with them. Leave them in a doctor's office. Take them to the places where you're serving. Just do, like you now can co-inspire with me to get empowered teachings out into the world. And you're already doing it by the ways you live. And the kindest feedback I get about it, which I think one of you this morning, is it's practical practical that's the intent to take these big high righteous spiritual principles and go how am I going to keep from kicking somebody that annoys me this afternoon <laughs> that's what I want to do so practical and they're short little simple like the assignment for this week is no more than 10 pages we can do this people even people that doesn't read. If they say, no, I don't want the book, I don't read. It's like, okay, sit down, I'll read it to you. Or, guess what? I have recorded this thing on YouTube. It's free. They can listen. You can listen when you walk. One of them said this week, like, my daughter and I have been listening to this as we paint. And... This means the next baby being born this afternoon will not be pinned with what we were pinned with. There's infinite potential here. So the chapters this week include how to take down this old binary system of filing that we have been filing with since we were since the beginning of creation, the good and the bad, and the better and the worse, and the good and the evil, and then us high righteous spiritual types will say, oh no, I don't believe in good and bad, oh no, it's all good. It's like, well tell your face, because <laughs> it has not caught up yet to it's all good. So maybe in the absolute, it's all good. Meanwhile, back here at the ranch, we've got this old system of filing set that says what is good and what is bad. And the problem with that is we believe it. So it's not that we filed it that way, but that we've believed it. So hurricanes are... Good or bad? Floods are good or bad? Whew. 
So see, no sane person will jump up at a time like this and say, hurricanes are good, very good, when people are burying their families and not knowing where they're going to live. But what if we could simply say they're included? Hurricanes are included. Hurricanes are part of Alpha and Omega, and all that is the reality of what is, hurricanes are included in that since creation. Floods are included in that. I don't have to like them. I don't have to love them. And I don't have to call them bad and then pass that on to the next seven generations either. So that our teaching can be, if God is all that is and God is reality, then for sure God is in this too. So she won't call you back and you've left her three messages, good or bad. <laughs> After all I've done for her. This is where the rubber meets the road. And I got an email this morning to thank me for these teachings. And she said, I didn't go into hell hotel, which you've heard from me about every time I stand here and serve with y'all. How quick we can check into hell hotel and lose awareness that I'm holding the key. And that my checking in was unconscious and I've got a key that I can check out of Hell Hotel anytime. But that part of us that's grown accustomed to that, even gotten somewhat addicted to that, being affronted, being offended, sees getting high off that. So to circuit break that is no little thing. To say, she didn't call me back, period. There's no problem there. She hasn't called me back, period. So power to the period. Instead of, she didn't call me back, comma, and she's a witch. She didn't call me back, period, and she doesn't respect me. She didn't call me back, period, and note to self, I will not have her over at Christmas. And I'll teach her something about kindness. <laughs> See, some of, some, many of you may have read the book. And then we, we say we want a kind world. And let kindness begin with me. It's like, well, as long as they suit me. I'll be kind to them. As long as they treat me like I demand they treat me. Instead of for us to have a different world. For us to create a different world and a different way of being in the world. It's going to be taking a pause there. And presencing ourselves and saying, she didn't call me back, Period. My feelings were hurt in that interchange, period. And then guess who's responsible for tending to my feelings then? Instead of giving my power over to somebody else. Like they can do something about my feelings. And then getting addicted to that. More addicted to something that's absolutely impossible to ever live out. So what would it be like then if that dividing line of good and bad, if today we just erased it and said, I don't love that, I don't like that, and it's included. It's part of what is. It's part of creation, things I can't comprehend the value of a hurricane, the value of flooding, the value of drought, 
And in the big scheme of things, it's required. It's necessary. So whatever's keeping the planets aligned as they spin this away and tilt and then spin some other way all at the same time can see from a dimension and a perspective that I don't have the ability to see from. So when I cannot make sense of things and when the heaviness of loss and suffering comes in, I have to go back to my deepest spiritual principle, which is to accept the mystery of it. I cannot comprehend this in this dimension. I can't comprehend human behavior either. Not just natural forces, but even intense polarized emotion in that. I can't comprehend that either. So the mystery of it. So if the good and bad comes down, it's included. So people that's been studying and working with me over the years, this is what I hear them saying then. Like, oh my God, well, I was in traffic jam. It's included. I got a diagnosis. It's included. Illness and wellness. Health and Whatever's the opposite. Kindness and unkindness. Respect and disrespect is included. Inhale and... So to say that one... So which is the good one? Inhale or exhale? <laughs> I'd go with that. Both have a place. Both have a function. Both have critical, critical nature. Next chapter is entitled, How Did I Contribute to the Problem? It's like, well, she don't know my mother. It's like, <laughs> we had the same one. One that didn't give us what we wanted, didn't care about us the way we wanted her to, some of us. And certainly at times. I've not met many people who like admitting that they have a contribution to the upsets. Or what went down, or what didn't work out right. I, on the other hand, have a tendency to take responsibility for everything. Anybody relate to that? If you're an oldest child, throw your hand up. This like goes with that. And then I hear from some of the youngest, like, it ain't just y'all, it's me too. <laughs> In a grocery store aisle, another shopper bumped her cart into my cart, and I apologized. <laughs> so some of you get this. And... I dated some man back in the, and before I knew better. <laughs> it's, it's like I'm doing my best to spare them from me. And he tried every way in the world to get me to quit saying I'm sorry. And I had no comprehension of what he was talking about. So that's how far gone I've been. Then when I told this little story, speaking up as a keynote at the Unity Canada Conference, Canadians in the house, I said, yes, welcome. I said, um, I told this little story. They said, well, of course you would have apologized. That's what civilized people do. Like, <laughs> what's your point? <laughs> so then how can we look at how I contributed and not take responsibility for it. So I have a contribution. I do things that cause them to do things. I say things in a way that causes them to react. I have attitude that causes them to react. I have a tone of voice that could 
cut people right off at the knee, and not to mention the look. I've got the look. So yes, I contribute to things and how to take responsibility for that without shame and without guilt and without self-hate and recrimination that could say, Reverend Aaron, I didn't respond the way I wanted to to what you said. I don't even know where that came from, honestly. And I'm sorry for that. And I'd like a redo, or I'd like to make clear that my question was simply to get information from you. It wasn't to criticize you in any way or the way it may have come out based on how it sounded. So an immediate amends. It's, it's a lot easier to do it as we go. Have you noticed? And then at the end of the day, to go into our heart to say, wherever I did that today that I wasn't aware or awake and quick to do it, I'm going to do it tonight. Just like I'd brush my teeth or take a shower, I'm going to clear that before I turn off the light or put my head down. So then it's a daily purification, a daily practice that says I can look back and take my own inventory today, minus the shame, minus the self-hate, minus the blame, and say that it was my humanness and I've got a choice in the matter now with how I'm going to be with this going forward. Can you tell me what time it is, somebody? How much time do we have? Okay. What does that mean? <laughs> okay, wrap it up. Great. All right. <laughs> Thank you, precious. Thank you, honey. It's really good to see you. All right. The last chapter is an important one. So we'll get into all of this. If you can stay for the workshop or text somebody that has suffered just enough or that cannot alone get out of their own suffering and tell them to come over here. Tell them to come over here that it, this is, that they don't have to pay anything. They don't have to be anybody. They don't have to believe like we do. They can just get over here and maybe get some help out of the suffering or their stuckness or whatever they're in. So this is to accept that pain, tension, and suffering are included. That pain and tension and suffering are all parts of our human learning systems. All part of our enlightenment. All part of our awakening. All part of our evolution. And... I came in as a little kid, naive and believing that I could actually end suffering. That I'm here to end suffering. And I've been questioned over the years about why I didn't have children, for example. And I knew at my earliest memory, three years old, that I would not ever have a child under any circumstances. Would I do that? And one of my teachers, Byron Katie, said, of course you wouldn't have a child because it would have been out of integrity for you to bring a child into a suffering world. That belief would have stopped that. And that it's too big a job. There's too much suffering here versus the suffering is here and guess who's here to be with people in their suffering? So then I can mother the world the best I can. And I can ante the world the best I can. And then minister to the world the best I can as a verb, not a noun. And then guess what? It's you. It's us. And just like in that way... 
Together we can do what none of us can do alone. Together we can do what can't be done alone. So I implore you to do it. And especially right now, I got so inspired by what you're doing here in your fundraising. And it's like I just work with another group, much smaller, and they came up with like $50,000 in two months. And I want y'all to outdo them. <laughs> and I know you can. And you know what? They got excited. They're like, oh, my God, I've got a table I don't want, and I can sell that thing for $1,200. And they sold that dang on table. And it's like I got jewelry in there that my kids will probably give to the Goodwill. I'm going to sell some of that jewelry and, like, hand that money over. And, like, wait a minute, I've been claiming I wanted to lose weight so I could skip Starbucks for five straight days, save 10,000 calories, and put another 20 in there. Well, no, eight times five, $56 would go in there, if, and nothing against Starbucks, love you Starbucks, and we've got to make choices, you know, about telling our money where to go, it's energy, and then being at the end of our life saying, I'm proud of what I did with that money, and I'm proud that I told it where to go, <laughs> and I'm proud that I dissolve some energy over here, and put it towards something that I want to see around for the next hundred years. So I'm cheering you on, and I'm making my own contributions, and you can count on that. And let's outdo last year. Let's do what is in our own integrity to do, to know that we put our heart energy, our life energy, our infinite power and potential into the teachings, the movement, what matters, and a spiritual community here. I was thinking about like what Adam said about what it meant to him. Like if we all just in your own meditation paused and reflected on what these teachings mean to you, what these teachings, these principles have done for your life, and what a community of acceptance and inclusivity, and you're welcome here. And I commit to seeing the divine in you. We have it here. It's priceless, I'd say. And we can demonstrate then in whatever ways we can. So it's my honor to be here. In any way in the world, I can serve you ever. MarthaCreek.com. And there's a little thing on there that says, Contact Martha. And pop your name in there. And I'll be back for Sisters of Myrtle. April the 5th, and as soon as that registration's open, jump in there and register because it will sell out, and we're very proud of that and invite others to come to that too, and until then, I love you more than bacon. Yep. <laughs>